Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with part two of the Hero Arts March 2018 card kit. So let's get started with number six. So for this one, we're going to do a shaker. So I'm using my uh, my favorite things wonky stitch rectangle and I placed the thank and you inside of it and I'm gonna leave it like that I know you can have the centers for the H's and the space between but again something different and no I didn't lose them so on this panel I'm now going to use my Versamark ink and I'm going to use the uh, silver glitter embossing powder that came with it and I added some hearts going around that as well, just to give something to this panel. We're going to set this up for a shaker. So we're going to uh, use my liquid glue, which is my art glitter glue. And we're gonna place that all over the back here, even those little tiny pieces, and then set down our acetate piece on top of that to make sure that's covered. Now I'm going to put an acrylic block on that only because there's just so many pieces going on there. I've doubled up my double-sided foam tape and you can see lots of that going on there and I filled it up. I almost used all of the sequins from the kit, filled that section up and then placed my panel on the back. Once that's done, we're going to use our liquid glue for the back so that we can place that down on our four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding black card base. And I think it's a real simple, you can do that with a lot of your sentiment dies as well, um, but it's really quick to put that together just to say thank you. For card number seven, I'm going to pull out some of my Stampin' Up! inks, one of their new colors in Fresh Fig. I've already cut my panel out with my favorite things, Wonky Stitch Dye. And I'm going to use my Versifying Black, and I'm going to stamp down two of the sentiments that says Sending Big. And we're just going to set that in the center, but towards the bottom. While this kind of is the focal point, I kind of want the background. Um, to be the focal point. I'm going to use one of the banner dies from the kit and you're going to see me I stamped this twice because the first one eh, didn't come out too great and here's the second one. So with the banner and also inside I put kisses I'm again going to use the embossing powder that came with the kit and we've heat set that and now I'm going to use the coordinating die to cut that out. And then that's going to be placed underneath, eventually, propped up on some foam tape on that panel. So I grabbed a stamp from my stash. It's a set of lips. And again, the color that I'm using from Stampin' Up! is called Fresh Fig. I love this color. Why do you ask? Maybe you didn't ask. Um, but I love, this is the color of lipstick I love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, husband hates the fall. I love the fall because uh, you can wear all of these dark colors. So we've got kisses all over the front of this card. So we're going to prop up the banner in place so that that stands out. And then this panel is eventually going to be going on a four and a quarter by five and a half top folding card base. We're not going to prop this panel up. We're just going to... Uh, directly adhere that to the card base. Now here's an awesome thing and a little tidbit. Make sure you clean your stamp off before you go into your Versamark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Came up with an awesome idea to put a set of lips on the inside using this terrific embossing powder. It looks so cool. I probably would have loved the panel to have been done in the silver lips. Um, but I think it's a nice surprise when you open it up. Yes, the Versamark pad is awesomely destroyed. <laughs> but we try to continue to use it, and you'll see. For our next card, you can tell I wanted to do a rainbow with my oxides. I'm first using the Picked Raspberry, 
and I'm going to use one of the sentiments that says amazing. And I forgot to do something here. I put clear embossing powder right over this. What I should have done was hit a light mist to the pigment because that kind of activates the pigment. So, okay, boo-boo. But we continue going. You can still see it. Um, but if you would have just put, and again, a super light mist, your distress sprayer would not be good for that. So a regular bottle sprayer, and it would actually come up pink. So, my fault. But we're going to move on. It's not worth throwing away and starting all over. So I stamped one of the sentiments with my Versafine, saying it's your. The Amazing's going to go in the center, and Birthday's going to go underneath that. So we're going to prop that up using some foam squares and we're going to set that in place. Now you'll see I had I was going to go in one direction. So for those of you that have seen my videos before, I like to show the thought process. You know, I tend to say that I was going to the left. This is where I was going to the left. There I am. I'm thinking with the fingers. That's it's actually how I do think. I twiddle my fingers. Now we're going to go to the right. So instead of using the what I call the explosion stamp, I just used the stars, the, the one star stamp. So I'm actually going to do a rainbow of just stamping these stars going across the card. So right now I'm choosing to only stamp three, and then I fill in where I see I've got some blank areas going across like I did here. So it's just like a, a rainbow type explosion going on up there. I'm going to directly adhere this onto my four and a quarter by five and a half top folding card base. And the colors I used were Salty Ocean, Squeeze Lemonade, um, Peeled Paint, Picked Raspberry, and Spice Marmalade, and I believe Wilted Violet. I'm using the Nouveau Glaze. And I'm just going to go over some of the stars. So to cover the stars, I'm going into the center and I'm pulling out for the points. Now when it comes to the Nouveau Glaze, it is wonderful. It is it, it dries really hard. It's very glossy. It is similar to glossy accents. But know that it is more liquid than a glossy accents. Um, it's not as thick, I guess I want to say. So here, I'm actually trying out a new product. I will be having a review on these later. This is the Arteza Colored Pencils. They also have a watercolor set, watercolor pencils. Yes, I have them. Um, and I'm going to do a review on those as well. I'm just playing around with them, seeing what they can do, seeing how far I can push them. You know, for me, products are like a science project. Um, but I will say, so far, I am liking their colored pencils. I think they are a great starter set. Um, and I say starter because we always know we end up with the Prismacolors or the Faber Castells or me who own all of them. Um, but I really like them. I, it's right now, I like them. So more to come on those. Again, I took a panel. I used my Penny Black Antique Frame Die. Yes, it is my favorite die. I took the Sentiment Make a Wish. I stamped that towards the top. And these lights, these candles here, lights, um, I got from my stash, and you saw I made a mistake. Now, you can see that mistake is gone. You know, I, I kind of went too far down looking at the position of the stamp, but that's okay. I went right over it, and it's not even noticeable. Matter of fact, it looks like it's part of the candle. So, here I go. I'm going to dig in. These are round, so they will roll on your table. That's the pencil sharpener that I do like. It's called the Eye Point Orbit. I believe Gina K. Yes, matter of fact, Gina K was the one that got me hooked on that pencil sharpener. I am also a huge fan of the Prismacolor Hand Sharpener. I kind of like that one a little bit more. Um, I do not like to waste my colored pencils or my watercolor pencils. Anything pencil. I don't like to waste it. I find with mechanical ones, you waste a lot. Um, but with a hand, you can control that on how much you're, you're taking away that you're not able to use. So just a little side note there, sorry. So you can see I'm coloring in all the flames. Um, I kind of tested out the how they blend and how they go together. Um, and so far, so good. But again, 
I am going to have a more detailed review on those pencils, and they are at a terrific price point. I believe this set was in the area of $20, $25 for 72 pencils. So I just want to get a little bit more information on them for you. So here I'm coloring in one of the candles. I got all the flames going there. I'm only focusing on one of those candles. I am shading with two different colors. Just want to see how they layer and how they go together. There are three levels in this case. It is a really nice metal tin. Um, and the containers that they sit in are really nice as well. It reminds me of the Derwent when you have layers in the Derwent. Yes, I have them too, as well. I'm going in with a green now. So this is a pink and green candle. And now I'm going to choose a darker shade. And now I'm going in. I'm sorry, I didn't choose a darker shade on that one. I stuck with the one color. And now I'm pulling out the black. So the rest of the candles going across, I'm just going to use the black to get a gray shade. I do, I am a fan of the uh, monotones, just black and white. I, I think it's not only simple, but it's elegant simple um simplicity elegance what we can call it um I, I just like the way that it looks i i remember my very first video some of you may remember it it was hero arts and it was with the pumpkin set the layering pumpkins and that's that's when it all started actually everything else was black and gray except the one sunflower coming off of it that was done in all of the different colors i just really like the look i think it makes the card stand out more um you know not everything has to be full color you can just pick and choose different areas to be color um, it's like those pictures that are out there where only some of the areas you know maybe a, a black and white photo and the woman's face is in color or her lips or her cheeks so just something to think about I have this double-sided foam tape. I haven't said anything about it. it. It is extremely strong, though. I will say that. I mean, nothing will come apart once you press down. You don't even have to press down. But it is difficult to get the backing off. That's why I use my pokey tool, and that's what makes it very easy to come off. I get it from Uline, um, and it is. It's at a nice price point. I'm going to use my black archival ink just to ink around the edge. Nope, not vintage photo just to make that panel stand up because it is white on white and again it is a four and a quarter by five and a half top folding card base i'm going to go to the inside of this card because it does say make a wish but i'm going to add on the inside two more sentiments and it's going to start with it's your and then the next one of course is going to be birthday so this stamp set or this card kit you know, I did stare at it for a little bit. It took me some time to get going. But sentiments, look how much we can do with sentiments. Um, you know, sometimes when we see that all at once, we can sometimes get overwhelmed or intimidated. I do. Um, do we remember the December kit? Yes, where I just did the backgrounds. Um, it can happen, but you know, once you get on a roll and think of all the different sentiments that you could create with this and group them together, it was a lot of fun. I added some sequins all around just to give it some sparkle. And as I said, more to come on the colored pencils. And of course, I did get their watercolor pencil sets as well. So how did I get that? I was trying to clean off my Versamark pad. Yeah, it didn't work. So thank goodness we have spares. <laughs> only me so I used that when I tried to clean it off I used the embossing powder that came with the kit and then I used the dye that says hello I'm then going to on my scrap piece of black cardstock here using their white pigment which I do like their white pigment ink Gina Kays does come first with me I do like her pigment ink um, but I do like this in a pinch. It gives great coverage. I'm going to use some clear embossing powder on top of that. I just want it to be faint because I've got that silver hello going on. I didn't want this to be so stark coming out. And I'm going to use the dye. It's the flag dye that made it look like a tag. 
So I grabbed my quickie glue pen because these were so intricate, um, so fine. And I'm just putting dots of glue around it. And we're gonna, I wanted to set this in place, but you can see I have this twine. And the card will not be finished with that <laughs> because I changed my mind. But I know I wanted to loop the twine through the loop in the by the H. So I'm going to set, now that I have that entwined through it, I'm now going to set my hello down and put a block on top of that. The quickie pens do take just a little bit to grab on. So I'm still going to play with this. Again, we're, we're still moving. It's not until the last minute I change my mind. But again, I wanted this to be a tag to come off of the hello to make it look like it's strung on there. We're going to prop the sentiment so that it stays in place. I mean, it's cute if it swings, but that would really swing. And I didn't want it to tear from my hello. So that's why I didn't make it too interactive because, again, very detailed die. So I'm stringing the twine through, the baker's twine through, and now I'm going to tie my bow. Again, I tie my bows upside down when it's like this. And I'm looking at that, and I like the splash of color. Um, there's where I changed my mind. Again, monochrome, the, the blue just wasn't working for me. Some of you may be thinking, no, don't get rid of the blue. We like the blue. Make one <laughs> with the blue. Um, but I did want to pull out my black and white. So because of the way that I adhered all of this, I was able to restring it um, up onto, because again, the quickie glue does it takes a little bit for it to dry so i've got some wiggle room that's going on there and i'm able to thread my baker's trunk baker's twine through the hole and then here i'm just going to create a knot and make sure it's snug up against that hole almost like a brad what that would do and then i'm just going to trim those ends I'm going to make them just a little bit uneven because nothing can be even. We've got to put all of our items on an angle. And I went directly on my four and a quarter by five and a half card base. I hope you enjoyed part two of the My uh, Monthly Hero card kit for March of 2018. I hope it gave you some inspiration, gave you some ideas. And by all means, enjoy these designs and have fun with them. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified, hit the bell too. Um, videos do come out as often as they can. If you have a comment or a question, I encourage you, please leave those down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All of the materials that I used outside of the kit will, as always, be listed below. But again, cannot stress enough, there's always one thing that I forget, and that's the one thing that you're looking for. So please, just let me know, and I'll quick update the description and send out that link to you so that you can look at the product as well. Again, I hope everyone had a great weekend. I hope it was peaceful. I hope you had fun. I hope you were creative during this weekend. But always remember, I can never stress this enough. Be creative. Take care, everyone.